Here! Over here! Thank you, Ezio. You saved my life. I did what had to be done. You would have done the same. I doubt it. Bravery is not my strong suit. I owe you a debt, brother. Di niente. Tutti a bordo! Fra poco si salpa! That's our traghetto. Venezia waits. Where's your pass? What pass? You don't have a pass? You cannot enter Venezia without a pass. Who invited you? Uh, nobody. Basta! No pass, no entrance! Don't worry, Leonardo. I'll come up with something. Don't just stand there! I need help! Madonna. Oh, you're good. The ladies must like you. I wasn't looking to impress. Only to help someone in distress. Which is exactly why you impress. And you are Messer... Auditore. But please, call me Ezio. 
I'm Katerina. Now, Ezio. We must find you suitable reward. Do you have any suggestions? There is perhaps something you could help me with. I'm all ears. Yes, Signora. Whatever you say, Signora. He won't trouble you anymore. I took care of it. Thank you, Katarina. Perhaps we'll see each other again. Should you ever find yourself in the city of Forli, it would be my pleasure to welcome you. I look forward to enjoying your hospitality. Please accept my most humble apologies, Messere. But had I known... <laughs> it's quite all right, my friend. Be careful, Ezio. Do you know who that was? My next conquest. <laughs> uh, I don't think so, Ezio. That's Caterina Sforza, daughter of the Duca di Milano. Her husband is... Husband? See, si. her husband is the Lord of Forli. That woman is as powerful and dangerous as she is young and beautiful. Sempre come una donna per me. Everything all right? Better than all right. You're making amazing progress. Amazing's quite a strong word. Then why are we stopping? Prolonged exposure to the Animus can have, uh, side effects. <laughs> awesome. It's nothing to worry about. You haven't shown any of the symptoms. Symptoms? What symptoms? Degradation of cognition, temporal hallucinations, multiple awareness issues, overlapping realities, you know. So, what you're saying is... What we're saying, Desmond, is if you're not careful, you may not need the Animus to visit with your ancestors. Which wouldn't be a bad thing, assuming you could control it. Up until now, though, no one has. Subject 16. We have safeguards, Desmond. And they kept him in the Animus for way too long, sometimes days at a time. We're being careful with you. I hope so. Anyway, I was hoping we could test out your skill retention. See if you've picked up some of Ezio's abilities. I'm game. Great. Meet me downstairs when you're ready. What are you up to? What am I up to? Who are you? My mum? I've been running traces on the Codex pages, looking to see if any of them are still around. And? Nothing concrete. Reports of one in the archives of the National Central Library in Florence, Maybe a few in the hands of collectors. Probably Templars. I'd send someone to check it out, but we're very short on manpower. How do you think the Codex wound up in Italy? I mean, it seems so random. Dante Alighieri by way of Marco Polo. Seriously? Something happened in 1321, yeah? Now, I'm still working on making the connections, but from what I can tell, Polo encountered the assassins while visiting Kublai Khan. This right, this must be when he obtained the Codex. Now, when he returned to Italy, he passed it on to Dante. Dante was close to him, if not an assassin himself. Now, I've no idea what brought the two of them together, but I'll tell you what, I reckon we could find out. I don't think Lucy wants us messing with the Animus. Yeah, you're right. We've got enough to deal with. I guess satisfying my curiosity will have to wait. What could Sixteen have found that needs so much secrecy and security? Oh, I don't know, do I? Lucy thinks it's something about the Codex, but I'm not so sure. I'm all ears if it's as life-changing as Sixteen says. Blimey, if I was allowed to use the Animus, I'd be the one in there finding out. Instead, as usual, I'm forced to sit here on the sidelines. How'd you get mixed up in all this? Most assassins, Desmond, are like you, yeah? They're born into the Brotherhood. Not me, though. Ah, uh, here we go. What? He asked. Anyway, I've always been a big fan of the unexplained. There's something exciting there, you know? A sense that life is more interesting, more mysterious than we've been raised to believe. So what, you just stumbled across the assassins? No. 
I found the Templars first, actually. Abstergo is a big company. It's too big, which means there were slip-ups. You know, like that mess they're having right now with the fluoride. Only I was tracking this stuff years ago. I must have been, what, 14, 15? You knew Abstergo was a Templar company? No, not at first. I just knew they were up to no good, and I figured maybe I could do something about it. So I started digging up everything I could on the company, posting stuff to news groups, trying to spread the word, looking for people who might have stories to tell. You must have gotten Abstergo's attention. Well, fortunately, I got Rebecca's first. Otherwise, I'd probably be at the bottom of a river. You're welcome. Yeah, she tried to warn me, told me I was messing with the wrong kind of people. And what did you do? I thought you were mental. But now you know better. Yeah, now I know you're just a bit mental. Long story short, I saved his ass. Multiple times. Should have dropped him and let Abstergo have their way. Listen to you, trying to be all badass. So what happened? I have a gift, Desmond. I have a gift for seeing things, making connections. Like your regal vision, you know? Only useful. We offered him a place with us. Yes, you did, yeah. The alternative? A life on the run from the most powerful organization on the planet. I decided to prolong my life. I'm eccentric like that, so I signed up. I've been doing research and analysis for them ever since. Best part is, I love it. I'm keeping tabs on the other teams. Other teams? The Templars have been hunting down the pieces of Eden using the map they got from you at Abstergo. Luckily, Lucius provided us with a copy as well, allowing us to pursue them. And how's that working out? So far, so good. If they find even one of those pieces, we're gonna have problems. Oh, you're picking up on that, are you? That is why we're training you. Once you've acquired the necessary skills, we'll be able to send you into the field. And what about you? Why aren't you out there? I'm not out there, because my expertise lies in other areas. And to be honest, I prefer it that way. But make no mistake, Desmond. I'm an assassin through and through. I've killed before. I expect to kill again. It's just that I prefer not to. Hey, nice work today. You're a natural. Thanks. It's definitely getting easier. I gotta say, after all the crap I went through at Abstergo, it's nice to be with the good guys. Good guys? Let's not get carried away. What's that supposed to mean? In case you've forgotten, Rebecca, we're assassins. I can look it up for you if you like. Basically, it means we assassinate people. Only when we have to. It's a choice. You're choosing to kill. I haven't killed anyone. No, not yet. But what do you think all this is for, eh? You think Lucy is giving you Ezio's abilities so you can build schools in South America and deliver rice to starving Indonesians? What are you, Desmond? A vegan? You'd be the first vegan assassin in history. Look, it's not ideal. And taking a life is never easy. But sometimes, there's no other way. Sometimes, Desmond, people have to die for things to change. She's got a point. But don't fool yourself into thinking you have no say. I mean, isn't that what we're all about here? Safeguarding free will? Sorry, I, I didn't mean to make it into a whole big thing. That's cool. So, how's she treating you? The translation software is still a bit laggy. You're probably catching the odd bit of Italian. Sorry about that. No worries. Abstergo's machine wasn't perfect either.
So what's the plan? We're gonna see what you've managed to retain. Come on. Abstergo's out there, looking for us. They're better funded and better equipped, so it's only a matter of time before they find this place. We need to be ready for them when they do. I want you to activate the warehouse's defense system. I'll let you figure out how to reach the sensors. Oh, come on. Not even a hint? Open your eyes, Desmond. Uh, Lucy? I'm seeing things. Do the hallucinations last longer than 30 seconds? No. Then it's nothing to be worried about. It'll pass. So, how am I doing? You've picked up every single one of Ezio's skills. The adoption rate is fantastic. Another day or two and we'll be done. Alright, you gotta tell me. Why Ezio? Why Italy? I mean, we could have just gone back to Altair again. Followed him during his early years. It started with 16. Ah, good old Subject 16. He repainted my room, you know. With his blood. I'd been going through his files. <clears throat> Vidic flagged a couple of his Animus sessions. A bunch of different ancestors, different dates and locations. Ancient Africa, the Middle East. But towards the end, he became obsessed with Italy. I think he knew about the vault. A few of the records of his later anima sessions are missing. And the sessions that are there... After everything the Templars put him through... After everything... I put him through... It's all scrambled. If we hadn't pushed Sixteen so hard, we'd have the answers already. And maybe he'd still be alive. So you're after the Codex and the Vault. I knew you had an ancestor in Italy who was at the center of all of this. All right, I think we're done for the day. You should get some rest. Lucy, what happened to Sixteen wasn't your fault. You were just as much a prisoner as I was. Thanks. Good night, Desmond. I'm glad you're here.
What the hell? What is this? Where am I? It's Acre. Altair. How the hell? Not even in the Animus. I must have passed out. Just having some kind of weird dream. Going without sleep for who knows how long. Guess I shouldn't be surprised. be his target. from Acre. What was her name? Maria. Yeah. I wonder what he wants with her. Whoa. I wasn't expecting that. here with Maria? Oh shit. That must be. This is one weird dream. Sorry to barge in on you like this, but it's getting late and we were... Hey, you okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, all good. Weird dreams, that's all. Alright. I'll let you get ready. See you in a few. Ah, good of you to join us. Sorry, long night. What a professional, what a professional approach. Leave him alone. Well, you'll forgive me if I want to get some actual work done. Oh, madness, isn't it? Sean, please, that's enough. All right. Hey. <clears throat> uh, hi. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Everything's fine. You sure? We lost two more teams last night. That's eight more of us, just... gone. I'm sorry. 
I don't know what to do anymore. It just keeps getting worse and worse. Hey, remember what you told me? You gotta have faith. And look, here we are, safe and sound. <laughs> For how long? And when they find us, then what? When that happens, if that happens, we'll deal with it. I'll keep you safe. Anyway, enough with my little breakdown. I should get back to work. And so should you. Messer Da Vinci! Yes? Buongiorno e ben arrivato! I'm Elvise! Signor Don has asked that I escort you to the workshop. Are you ready? Ah, Venezia! What other place is as beautiful, as stable, as perfect? Come, I will show you her wonders. Our first stop, the Rialto Bridge. Behold the elegance with which she spans the Grand Canal, a symbol of Venetian unity and pride. Let us continue. Here we are, San Giacomo di Rialto, the oldest church in Venezia. Isn't she beautiful? And her clock tower, magnifico! No other city can match the size of Venezia's markets, be it spices or silk, from near and far. There is... there is... You were told to stay home, but the rent is paid. I have every right to sell here. Emilio disagrees. No, no, stop, stop! Let us continue the tour elsewhere. And here we have the Palazzo della Seta, home to Emilio Barbario. Normally I'd suggest a closer look, but... but the way things are now... Why? What's happened? He is attempting to unify the merchants beneath a single banner. There has been a resistance. Some of it violent. What kind of resistance? They say they're fighting for the people, or freedom, or some such nonsense. Bajanate, if you ask me. They destroyed my stand. I demand compensation. Here you are, then. <clears throat> the Doge will know about this. I'll report you to the council. Good luck with that, my friend. What, what are you doing? You're under arrest for disrupting commerce. What? You just invented that. There's no such law. There is now. No, stop! I present to you your workshop, Ser Da Vinci. We spared no expense in its design. You'll see, it is perfect, as if you never left Firenze. I wish you great success, and hope you enjoy Venezia as much as she enjoys having you.
So, here we are. Exciting, isn't it? Care to come in? It may be later. I need to visit the Palazzo della Seta. Try and gain an audience with Emilio. As you wish. But should you find yourself with free time, or another Codex page, don't hesitate to visit. My door is always open. Grazie, my friend. Di nulla. I found this awesome place for you to explore and practice your skills. Santa Maria de Frari. I've marked it on your map. This hero's luck will hold me. Pray and when he... See. Denaro! Wow! See. Oh. Wow! Que buona fortuna! See. Denaro! Wow. Si, si. Wow, wow. Yeah, mami. Mami, a weekly bleeding is part of a balanced, healthy lifestyle. No client of mine would ever be caught under threat. How best to get inside? I'll scale the wall and... Oh, that's not good. I'll never make that jump. I need to find another way. I never did apologize for knocking me over. No! Va bene, where to? The water. That doesn't exactly narrow it down. <sighs>
Can you walk? What do you think? I never did catch your name. Rosa. Honorato Rosa, Amezio. I know. Salve. What do you mean, I know? No, no, Ora. Now is not the time for small talk. Why are you blind? Ah, don't be shy. I only aim to... Hugo! What's this? Rosa's been wounded. Pass her here. We'll go the rest of the way in the boat. Careful. Go! I'll deal with the guards! Kill them, Exio! Quickly! Stop them! 
Make it look easy, Frank. Dead, idiota! Say a prayer later! Porco, I need to see... I need to see Antonio! Be careful! Let me do it! Go and find Antonio! Mr. Hugo, do what he says! Qual l'ultimo arrivato dagli ordini! Hey! Hey! Wake up! We need help. Where's Antonio? Make yourselves useful. Clear a space for her. Put her down there. Where are we? Oh, they've sent for help. Thank you. Rosa, what's happened? Just get this out of me. Soon, soon. Let's have a look first. Clean entry and exit through the thigh. That's good. Get it out! Rosa, we must take care now! of Now! Come here, boy. Tenetela. I'm sorry, Piccola. Sorry! Ficatelo nel polo, you're sorry! Go fetch Bianca and be quick. Help me with this. How? Take a clean piece of linen. When I remove my hand, press the cloth into her wound. Are you ready? Now! Ben Falco, you work well under pressure. She's spirited this one. Porca puttana! Avanti! Get Rosa inside so that Bianca can close the wound. You'll be all right. The worst is past. Ti venisse il cancero, brutto bastardo! A te che la grandissima troia di tua madre! Rosa is most dear to me. If I had lost her... I've always had a soft spot for women in distress. So I've heard. Don't look so surprised. We know all about you, Ser Ezio. Your work in Florence and the rest of Tuscany. Good work, too. If a little... unrefined. Then you know why I'm in Venezia. I can guess. When you have a minute, come see me in my office. There's something we should discuss.
Ezio. Prego. Can I offer you something? Biscotti. Un caffè. What's caffè? An interesting concoction brought to me by a Turk merchant. Here, have a taste. A little bitter, if you ask me. Just seems lacking somehow. I don't know, have you considered adding sugar, maybe? Or latte? I suppose it's something of an acquired taste. Enough about that. Now where were we? Our failure at the Palazzo cost us dearly. It will take time to recover. No doubt Emilio will use this pause to strengthen his defenses. And continue his oppression of the district. You may not share our motive, but I know you share our goal. Why not gather your forces and try again? To act in haste would only bring more losses. No. We must resupply and draw new plans. Can you afford to sit around and wait? Nor would I want you to. Work with us instead. Already my men begin to mend today's wounds. Seek them out. They'll put you to work. The sooner you aid them, the sooner we can strike. Molto bene, Messeri. I accept. It is the right decision. Established sometime around 1465, the Venetian Thieves Guild, due to its illegality, had no permanent headquarters. Although efforts were made by the magistrates to crack down on thievery, accused culprits never seemed to be around when the city guard went searching for them. Likely established sometime around the late 7th century, Venice's lagoon lock location was the result of Byzantine settlers attempting to hide from Lombard invaders. By the Middle Ages, the city had grown into a great naval power. Its strategic position at the top of the Adriatic meant that ships taking goods inland had to go through Venice, filling its coffers with money and commerce. Entering the late Middle Ages, Venice exercised influence over both its neighboring states and the church. When the Fourth Crusade rolled around in 1202, the Crusaders required transport on Venice's ships, which the Venetian Doge, Enrico Dondolo, agreed to on the condition that the Crusaders retake the Dalmatian city of Zadar and then capture Constantinople. When Constantinople fell, the city was sacked by the Venetian fleet, which stole, among other things, four bronze horses as ornaments for the Basilica San Marco. Now that's what I call a faith-based initiative. As Venice's wealth grew, so did its fleet. Through sea battles she gained Byzantine territory, Hungarian territory, and destroyed the Genoese fleet. Venice's fortunes were so entwined with the sea that every year the doge would throw a ring into the lagoon while saying in Latin, We wed thee, see, in the sign of the true and everlasting Lord. Despite much eye raising about the godliness of sea human relations, the Pope sanctioned the marriage. By the end of the 15th century, Venice was quite possibly the wealthiest city in the world and the second largest city in Europe after Paris, but the rest of Europe had had enough. France, Spain, Austria, and Hungary, joined together in the League of Cambrai, partnering with Pope Julius II to crush Venice. But Venice was able to weather the storm, ultimately keeping her territories even after several disastrous defeats. But she would never expand again. Turkey attacked in the 18th century, and Venice began a long decline which ultimately ended in 1797, when Austria took control of the Republic. Date of birth 1460, profession, thief. The child of an unknown Venetian nobleman and a prostitute, Rosa grew up on her own in the streets of Venice. In 1475, she attempted to pickpocket the leader of the Venetian Thieves Guild and was caught red-handed. But, Antonio, instead of reporting her to the police, took her on as a pupil. He kept several logs of her training, noting that her ability to leap up from the street to seemingly unreachable window sills was unprecedented. In terms of her social skills, her vocabulary was colorful to say the least. Apparently, she could also hold her own in a fight. Antonio writes that the last of my thieves who tried to kiss her escaped with most of his mouth intact. Built by Franciscan monks, Santa Maria Gloriosa dei Frari, the Frari for short, is the second largest church in Venice. Following the guidelines of Saint Francis, who advocated poverty, 
The church has very basic exterior decoration. It is rumored that in the 15th century, the Frari housed a hidden tomb, which has since collapsed. During his brief stay in Venice, Leonardo da Vinci was a paid military engineer for the Venetian army, and claimed to be working on a painting of the famous Isabella d'Este, of whom he had made a cartoon while visiting Mantua. Despite promising her repeatedly that he was hard at work, no painting ever materialized. Although many history books claim Leonardo only visited Venice once, it seems that he used his workshop there as a sort of secret retreat, returning to it repeatedly during his life. The home of Venice's most powerful merchant, Emilio Barbari E.O. Work on Sita, as it is affectionately known by locals, was completed in 1450. The palazzo is a standout example of Venetian Gothic architecture, dark and imposing, yet light and airy at the same time. Originally founded in 421, San Giacomo is believed to be the oldest church in Venice, although the current building was constructed around 1071. The 15th century facade is crowned with a magnificent 24-hour celestial clock. During the Renaissance, the church was typically used by the merchants in the nearby market as a place to stop and pray during the workday. At least, that's what they told their wives. The oldest, and the most famous bridge in Venice, the Rialto is the dividing line between the districts of San Marco and San Polo. The bridge is notable not only for the size of its large arch, but also for its main walkway lined with shops and stalls, which was a vibrant strolling and meeting place for the community around it. Contrast that with today's Rialto, where crowd of tourists fight over cheap knockoffs of Venetian glass while some idiot attempts to spit off the edge of the bridge onto passing boats. Ah, modernity. Venice is situated on a series of islands surrounded by a lagoon, requiring travelers arriving or departing to take a Trigetti, ferry. Trigetti come in all sizes, from the small ferries that shuttle people around the city to large ships that carry passengers to and from the mainland. Trigetto stations were run by guilds, which enacted all kinds of laws to make sure that only the most connected members had the lucrative privilege of working at a station. Each station had its own rules, which could range from allowing only people 40 years of age and older to work there, to forcing pilots to only carry 10 passengers per ship. Date of birth, 1441, profession, baggage handler. A Venetian native, Alvise worked as a baggage handler for several years, until, convinced of Venice's superiority, he enlisted in the Navy. In 1500, he was tasked with defending the fortress of Modin from the Turks. After a heavy night of drinking, Alvise awoke to Turkish cannon fire bombarding the town. Panicking while running across the deck, he tripped, hit his head, and drowned. When it became clear Venice had lost the battle, he was accused of negligence by the ship's captain and erased from the logs of the navy. Date of birth, 1463, profession, Countess of Forli, noble. A countess by marriage, Caterina was notorious far before she ever arrived in Fort Lee. Raised in the court of Milan, she received a classical education while tutored in the art of war by her father, the Duke. At court, Caterina also acquired a passion for alchemy and hunting. In 1473, when she was 10 years old, Caterina became engaged to Girolamo Riario, the Pope's nephew. They consummated their marriage when she was 14. Once in Rome, she was heralded as one of the most outgoing nobles at court, while her husband had a reputation for being one of the most ruthless. With the premature death of the Pope's brother, Girolamo gained even more power, securing the titles of Lord of Imola and Forli. When the Pope died, looters sacked Rome, destroying Caterina's residence. Unafraid, despite being seven months pregnant, Caterina rode on horseback to the Castel Sant'Angelo and defended the Vatican with cannon fire and soldiers. In 1484, she moved with her family to Fort Lee. Paid off by someone with a grievance against her husband, the Orsi brothers killed Girolamo in 1488. As a result, Caterina became the ruler of Forli and Imola. She wasted no time, winning the favor of nearby rulers, revising the tax system and training the militia herself. Although she advocated peace, when those around her were hurt she dealt fierce vengeance, frequently killing enemies' wives and children in punishment. While Forli was under attack by Cesare Borgia the Pope's son, 
she sent the Pope a letter that had been rubbed with plague sores. Ultimately, Forli and Caterina fell to Cesare Borgia in 1499. Caterina was captured and sent to Rodrigo Borgia in Rome, who kept her imprisoned for a year and is rumored to have raped her alongside his son. When she emerged from the Vatican, her hair had turned white. Exiled to Florence, Caterina died of pneumonia in 1509. Venetian naval strategy involved maintaining a steady chain of bases along their trade routes to the east, ensuring that its merchants were able to get there and back without being attacked by pirates or Venice's enemies, the Turks. By the end of the 15th century, Venice's fleet was occupied trying to force Charles VIII of France out of Italy, at which point, Turkish forces struck without warning. Venice was soundly defeated, losing its Greek outposts. Following that, the Turks managed to invade Venetian territory in northern Italy. Although Venice was able to keep most of its territory, from that point forward, it would never again be a great naval power. <laughs>